very big day today. Some of you are not going to want to watch this video, I totally understand. We're going to be butchering rabbits. This is not a video about how to butcher rabbits. This is Ask Home Study. We're going to answer a really good question that is a lot on my mind today because it's the first time that I've ever butchered rabbits. And I think I really understand where this guy Keith, who I totally feel for, I totally get where you're coming from Keith. He's a bacon loving American. He wants to be able to butcher his own food, but he's afraid he won't be able to do it. And I feel a little bit like that today. Like I've never butchered these cute little bunnies and I'm afraid I won't be able to do it. I'm gonna tell you how I get through this, uh, how you're gonna get through it Keith, how we're gonna be able to raise our own meat and do it without being a sociopath. So let's get into that today. All right, this is Ask Homesteady, the weekly show that we do where we answer your questions that you leave here on the channel. And if you would like to get a question answered, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is put hashtag, all one word, Ask Homesteady in a comment, leave it on one of this week's videos, and when I go to do this show, I look through them all, and then I pick whichever question I think I can answer best that day, and we answer it. And sometimes we answer more than one, so your chances of getting in here are pretty good some weeks and less good other weeks. Today's question is from viewer Keith. Hello Homesteady, love your videos. I'm a wannabe, I'm a homestead wannabe with dreams of having my own orchard and raising ducks someday soon. My question concerns slaughtering animals. Despite being a carnivorous, bacon-loving American, I've always felt uneasy about the prospect of killing an animal with my own hands. I'm afraid that when I get my ducks or whatever animal I settle on, I'll chicken out and be unable actually to kill them. Could you talk about how new homesteaders can, and he does this, get over an uneasiness about killing animals and maybe like general practices for humanely doing so? I know of course this will vary from animal to animal, but general advice would still be helpful. Keith A, Washington State. Keith, I hear you man, I totally get it. I too grew up a bacon loving American <laughs> who had never killed a thing in my life. Most people in our day and age don't ever have to kill a thing on purpose to be able to eat. And so that allows us the circumstance, the comfortable place in life to decide not to, to say, no, I'm not gonna kill anything. I, I don't wanna have to do that. More and more of us are starting to take on that responsibility, or at least we have the desire to. Not because we're sociopaths, not because we have a bloodlust, but because we understand that to live requires other things to die. That applies whether you're a vegetarian, you're a vegan, whatever you are, if you live, other things die because of you. That's just a rule of the universe. And a lot of us would like to take on that responsibility because we understand the value in shortening our food chain, having more control over the food we eat, making sure that what we're feeding our families is good and healthy and wonderful and safe. Um, and also just, you know, stepping up to the plate and saying, you know what, if I'm gonna eat meat, I'm gonna be the one to kill it. So good on you, Keith, for attempting or wanting to attempt this. Let's talk about how you can get through this. I think there's a lot of people who grow up country living, farm living, who just get used to this. They, my kids, they will never have the same uh, issues I had doing this because for them it's just part of life. They understand that to eat, things die. If you have a garden, you're out there working in the garden, you're cutting up earthworms when you dig in that ground, and you know, either pests come through on your bugs and you're squashing them, and eating plants, things die. When you take those plants and harvest them, things are on that plant that die, get washed down your drain. If you're a meat eater, you directly go out and kill or someone else goes out and kills meat. So uh, my kids understand that, they know. They, they see farm living, animals die every day on the farm, not our farm, but all over the world, animals are dying every day. Animals die in the wild. Animals in the wild are killing each other. My kids are totally used to this fact. But uh, most of us grow up really with that 
tucked away and hidden and the only exposure we have to the idea of animals dying is the sadness in a Disney movie when an animal dies and we're like, oh no! And so then when you become an adult and you decide, you know what, I think it would be responsible for me to you know, butcher the things I eat because that life is important and if I'm going to end it, I should be the one to do it to make sure it's done the right way and the best way and that that animal is good quality for my family. All the other people who are used to the Disney movie go, oh, you're the bad guy in the movie. That's inside us too. We think to ourselves, oh man, I'm the bad guy in the movie. We're used to that. So Keith, I want to help you get over that. And I think there's three things that we have to talk about. First, the idea of getting over it. Second, the actual way to get the knowledge and then third how to be able to get over that first kill of an animal that you raise because it is hard just like the 100th one is so let's first talk about the idea of getting over the killing your own animals i really like that he actually used quotes on the word get over it in his question because i agree with keith i don't think you actually do get over killing an animal and I think that's a good thing. If you got used to it, I think you would be a sociopath. Anytime you take a life, it should hurt a little bit. I say this as a farmer and a hunter. Someone who raises animals for food and goes out into the woods because he enjoys hunting and shoots animals. And every single time, I promise you, there's a little bit of pain inside at the end of that life. It could be a big trophy buck that I'm just amazed I had the chance to even put an arrow through and I, the minute that happens I feel sad for it. I feel sad that that majestic animal's life is now over and at the same time I feel grateful that I was the one who was able to harvest that animal and I'll use the word kill and harvest. Killing is the action of ending the life. Harvest is what I do with an animal that I kill. I now harvest that meat. I don't let it rot out in the woods. Harvest is the action of taking that kill and putting it to use. I think every single time that you butcher an animal, hunt and kill an animal, go fishing and, and kill a fish, you should feel a little bit sad because you are ending a life. And while I do not believe human life and animal life is at the same level, and I know some people will disagree there, um, I feel that human life is more important and so to kill an animal to continue a human life is okay in my book. It doesn't mean that that animal's life is valueless. I respect that animal, I am grateful to that animal um, and I think no matter how many times you do it, Keith, you should always feel a little bit of pain. Now I promise you the first one's harder than the other ones. Uh, the first animal you raise and then butcher is going to be hard and then the first of every kind. These are the first rabbits I've raised. They'll be harder than the next rabbits that I butcher because it's that, that getting over the wall every single time. But that's good. If you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do this, that shouldn't really go away. Otherwise, you might be a sociopath and you should get that checked out. Uh, it will get a little bit easier but it will always, there'll always be that respect. And that is important. I think too few people have that experience in their life of killing an animal and then eating it. And so too many people are willy nilly throwing meat in the garbage. Do you, be honest, does meat ever get thrown out in your house? I will be 100% honest. Not all the meat we put in our fridge gets eaten by humans, but not a ounce of it goes to waste. It's hard to make sure all your meat gets consumed and nothing goes bad and nothing gets moldy or funky smelling. Even in a household that tries really hard to do that, it's still hard. But then we have chickens and we have pigs and we have other animals very specifically so that that meat doesn't go to waste. If there's meat that gets a little funky and old, well, the chickens eat it and they turn it into a chicken egg, which we then eat. Or if we don't eat, it goes to a pig and gets turned into bacon. No living animal or plant gets wasted here on this homestead. It all gets reused, recycled. There should always be a little bit of pain there, but it will get easier. Now let's talk about, Keith, how to, it, to make it get easier, how to get over that first slaughter at your, you know, your farm or how to do that. So there's, there's two points here. There's the knowledge of how to do it and then there's the the willpower and the motivation to do it. We got to cover both of those. Oh, all right, 
let's talk about something I think all of us, no matter if you grew up in the country or you grew up in the city, pretty much if you didn't grow up in a plane, we could all probably agree that this is a scary thing. Skydiving, right? Skydiving, that seems like everyone could agree it would be a scary thing to do. If I was gonna tell you how to skydive, I would make sure two things. First off, I'd make sure that you understood how to skydive. Because if you get to that door and I say, you ready to jump? And you go, yeah. And then I go, you know how to open up your parachute? And you go, no, you're not gonna jump. <laughs> Even if you have the motivation, your body won't let you. You're, yeah, because you don't know how to do it, you're gonna be too afraid. So first you have to learn how to actually butcher a thing, not the thing you raised. Don't start there. Start with learning how to butcher. Just do one at a time. If you're gonna go skydiving, first thing you learn is how to properly deploy a parachute, how to jump out of a plane. I don't know, I'm assuming. Really? I've never gone like, skydiving, but. I don't know. What? I got a heckler. Always. I would assume the first thing you learn when you're skydiving, because I've never done it, nor will I, uh, because I think life is sacred. <laughs> like I already mentioned here, I think life's important. I would assume what they teach you first, <laughs> that what you would learn first is just how to do it, right? How to use the parachute, how to jump out of a plane the right way. So you gotta do the same thing with butchering. You gotta learn how to butcher something. Because if you show up to your first butcher day with a fluffy little chicken that you raised and named, and you don't know how to cut its throat, and you don't want to, you're never gonna do it. So first learn how to butcher, and the best way to do this without that emotional attachment to a specific animal is to do it as a hunter or a fisherman or a student at a class. We used to teach on-farm butchering classes. So Keith, look to see if anyone around you does that. You're going and butchering their chicken. You don't have any emotional attachment. It's just a funny looking little chicken. It's not like, oh, there's little Petey. I don't know why you named your chicken Petey. That was your first mistake, Keith. Catchatory. Catchatory, that's better. Learn how on something you're not emotionally attached to. I suggest starting, I learned first how to butcher on a fish. Almost every human being has the emotional wherewithal to end the fish's life. I don't know why fish get such like low on the totem pole of important, but it's like mosquito, fish, you know, and then at the top's like kitten or something. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what do we know about a totem pole? Oh man, <laughs> dang it. Switch that and reverse it. You always correct me on that. I do, totem pole actually is the other way. The lowest one's the most important. So, what was I saying? <laughs> Ooh, I'll yeah. be here all day. Because I'm here to help. Alright, um, I'm pretty much ready. I started as a fisherman, then I graduated to being a hunter. I don't want to say graduated, it's not like... I started butchering fish, then I became a hunter. A hunter is still easier, I think, than being a, a homesteader or a farmer because the kill takes place far away from you. You are literally distant from the kill. So, the hunter can be a hundred yards away, it could be 10 yards away, but it still puts some distance between you and that animal you have no emotional connection to. Uh, it has no emotional connection to you. It would kill you if it had the chance and it had to. So it's just like, you know, you're both out there on level ground. Once you butcher something else you're not attached to, now you know how to do it, then it's just a matter of actually being able to make yourself kill that first animal that you raised that you don't really want to because you're not a sociopath. So how do you get to that point, Keith? Let's talk about that as we process our very first rabbit that we've ever processed ever on our homestead, on our farm. We've never processed a rabbit before. We are about to butcher our first rabbits, but first it's time to do the Homestead e Camel Train shout out. And today's Homestead e Camel Train shout out goes to Aaron and Kyle. Aaron and Kyle are a couple of years into their homesteading journey. They have acreage in Eastern Iowa, 
where they have 20 laying hens and every year they do a batch of meat birds. So they know what it's like to raise their own food for meat. Good job, guys. They do that to provide for themselves and their friends and family. That's a great little bonus tip for you, Keith. Remember who you're raising this food for, friends, family, that'll be a good motivating force for you. They're expecting their first child in July. Congratulations, guys, that is so exciting. My very first child was born in July. They're looking to expand into a dairy cow and maybe a couple pigs after they get settled with their newborn baby. First kids kind of rock your world, so just pause on the cow for a little bit till you get your rhythm, but you'll get there. They say that they have been fans of Homesteady for a couple of years. They've learned an uncountable number of things to try to do on their homestead. Aaron, Kyle, I'm so glad you guys have been inspired by the channel, have learned a few things while you watched. Congratulations on the new baby and on your future cow and pigs. Thank you guys so much for being part of the camel train. Now let's get back to butchering. We're going to be diving into our very first rabbit. All right, before I actually start butchering these rabbits. I wanna actually talk to Keith and anybody else in Keith's shoes. This is not easy. I've butchered a lot of things. I'm a hunter, I'm a farmer. Um, I don't feel good right now. I feel like, I always feel a little bit like, uh, especially before it's gotten going. Once we get started and we're you know turning things into beautiful meat, then it's easy to get excited about, like look at this nice meat going in the freezer. But I'm not looking forward to this. I got a bit of a pit in my stomach. Um, it's just, if I want to eat, other things are going to die. I understand that about the universe. I understand that all these animals will die. Left to nature, these animals die a death of being killed by a predator, which is a lot worse than this is about to be. Or they grow old, lose their teeth, and starve to death, or get sick and die in the cold. Like, nature kills things pretty cruelly. Most of the time, nature doesn't let things die peacefully in its sleep. This will be quick. It will be painless. We're going to be uh, basically breaking its neck so it's very quick and then we're gonna bleed it out quickly after that. So I'm not happy about this, but I am happy that there's gonna be delicious food for my family to eat. And I think that's just what it comes down to, Keith, is you just realize, you know what? I love bacon, so pigs gotta die. And uh, it doesn't mean you love killing pigs, but bacon is delicious. Okay, um, first one's done, it's the hardest one. The best way to kind of get over the precipice there, I think, is uh, when you have gone through the process of what you're going to do a hundred times, you know, okay, I'm gonna move them here, go here, put them here. It becomes kind of like a robotic, like, take animal, put it here, step here, hang them here, cut here, uh, and then you just kind of like, if you're going to jump out of a plane, at some point you just have to jump out of the plane. So at some point you just have to go, okay, one, two, three, pull, and the process begins, or one, two, three, cut, or whatever it is. Um, first one's done. It's the hardest one. How did you feel about the uh, room method? Room method worked really good, actually. I'd rather be up here with them, but. All right, Keith, on to number two. This was all your fault, Keith. Keith. <laughs> this blood is on your hands, Keith. So the final bit of advice I have for you, Keith, is really more like how to get you to jump out of that airplane. A couple little tricks I've learned over time. I used to teach a course, how to butcher, and I've seen a lot of people who didn't want to, really didn't think they were gonna be able to actually then do it. And here's, so here's a little bit of advice for you, Keith. Um, first, your setup. If you spend a month preparing, getting the equipment, getting all the gear, get it all ready over the period of a day or two and have it all ready to go, you put so much time and effort into this, you've thought it out so many different ways, you're going to, have a lot of uh, momentum behind you to keep going. Or Second, just to get it over with. <laughs> or just to get it over with, yeah. Second, uh, raise an animal 
that you have that is less fuzzy and cute, don't start with rabbits or ducks. Start with Cornish crosses. They're like a ticking time bomb. If you don't butcher them in eight weeks, they'll die by week nine or 10. So you're thinking like, oh, I better kill this, otherwise it's gonna die and rot, so. I better do it. There are some exceptions. Some Cornish will live longer. I know, you had a Cornish. Disclaimer. This whole video, you're, just my, uh, you're my YouTube comment. I'm your YouTube comments, yeah. Uh, I know, disclaimer. one of you have a Cornish Some Cornish, Cornish can cross live forever and ever and lay eggs, we know. Finally, there is power in numbers. Get yourself a butcher buddy. I got mine right here. Built-in butcher buddy. Find a friend who wants to try to raise their own meat, somebody who already does it, go to, a, like I said, a class. Uh, find somebody else because peer pressure is powerful and if one of you is a little bit further down the line does the first one it'll help the second person do it too yeah another thing i thought was prepare yourself for mentally prepare yourself for what it is you're doing there will be okay you're killing something which means uh it will struggle Ooh, this is good there will be noises there will be blood. There will be after death movement that is very disconcerting sometimes. Yeah. He talked about it, how to make it the most humane and like, death is death. Like, it's not usually super peaceful. You want it to be fast, as painless as possible. Keep the animal as calm as possible. But there is still just inherently, there's, it's death. Yeah, if your chicken's still flapping, don't feel bad. If your chicken's still flapping, don't feel bad. This rabbit is obviously dead, but it's... How's it still moving with okay, Kayla? And don't forget, you're new at this, and you're gonna be new at this for years. Yeah. It, you don't, as a homesteader, you never kill enough things to become as good as a butcher is, and so you'll make mistakes in your first year, in your fifth year, and your tenth year. Right. And you'll feel bad about them, Even but remember, butchers have kills that don't go perfectly. There are plenty of skulls out there at butcher shops with two holes in them. So it happens. The will to survive in an animal is incredibly strong. Don't beat yourself up. Just learn from it. And move forward. Mm -hmm. All right. We got. Speaking of moving forward, we got like three more to go. Keith, uh, one more tip. You did want some practical advice on actually butchering animals humanely. Yeah, it's incredibly specific to animals as far as what to do. The best tip I can give you uh, as far as like making sure your butcher day goes well, make sure you have good sharp knives, comfortable clean place to work, rubber gloves, running water. Uh, you know, just get yourself set up in the best way possible. Uh, have everything contained. Have all your animals contained already. So the night before, lock them up, put them up. That way, the day of, you're not running around trying to catch them. That heightens the cortisol levels. So that's not a calm, peaceful way for them to go. So you can easily grab them, take them to where you're butchering. There we have our very first meat rabbit that we've ever processed. I feel a lot better here than I did at the beginning of the line. Here, I'm proud. Look at what we were able to raise off of our homestead. We, these are from our own breeder rabbits. It was out on pasture for the last two weeks of its life, eating dandelions and fresh grass. There's no better quality meat on the planet that I could put on my kid's table. Uh, there's gonna be, it's no, no more delicious rabbit out there. And we're gonna get to eat it fresh, never frozen. This is where it all feels like, okay, it was all worth it. It was hard, it was sad, it's, it's tough. But when you get to feed that to your family as a provider, Keith, I don't know if you have a family yet, if it's just for you or what, but whoever you feed that to, yourself included, you'll feel so proud. And that's what this is all about. It's about feeling proud about what we put on our plate for us, for our families. This is how it happens. This is how you do it. Please, Keith, comment below when you first successfully do your first butcher. I'm putting you on the line here. I know you can do it. It might take you a month, it might take you six, but let me know, come back and let me know that it worked. And for those of you who watched, I hope this video helped any of you with this process coming up. YouTube will flat out demonetize this before it even goes live. So if you like the fact that we do videos like this, consider becoming a Homesteady Pioneer. Click there, 
It's how we're able to do this show. You get a ton of bonus content. We have an interview coming up all about raising meat rabbits in a colony with the woman who wrote the book that we read when we started our colony. So if you become a pioneer, click there. You'll be able to join us for that interview, which is coming up in just a couple weeks. Thanks for watching. I got a few more rabbits to put in the freezer. Good.